The idea of a spontaneous city does seem an odd one, but that's exactly what turned up in the Nevada desert over the Labor Day weekend. A city with the curious name of Burning Man. Whatever you want to call it, city or festival or community or event, it's been going on over a decade. And for most of that time, word of each year's location has been quietly passed on the Internet. In fact, some people believe Burning Man is the physical manifestation of the Internet, a kaleidoscopic, no-holds-barred cultural experiment. And just as the Internet is interactive, so is Burning Man. The idea is that there are no spectators. In fact, the press passes they hand out say simply, this pass entitles you to nothing in particular. Have a beautiful experience of your own, which is what everyone else is out to do. Thousands of people doing the strangest things and getting along, and that in itself is cause for celebration. So we thought you might like to see up close what some people have called a proto-apocalyptic, hippie, neo-pagan freak fest. Our Tom Foreman traveled there to see for himself. Two hours north of Reno, in the vast emptiness of the Black Rock Desert, a town is rising. The streets and cafes, neighborhoods and police, and thousands of residents yearning to burn the man. This is Burning Man a loosely organized, frenetic explosion of community, creativity, and chaos. For 12 years, this five-day alternative art festival has been steadily growing, now drawing somewhere between eight and 15,000 people each summer, people who come from all over the world for a world of reasons. I used to be really shy, really reserved. I had trouble meeting people. I thought if I came out here in such an open atmosphere, I could really be myself. This is just a wonderful celebration of creativity. It sounded like it was the last cool thing to do. It's a weekend away from ordinariness. Traditionally, this non-traditional weekend starts on the Wednesday before Labor Day. Have you been to Burning Man before? in a location so remote that everyone who comes must bring camping equipment, food, water, and, of course, their own ideas about art. Break it or put it on a sideways or something. See what you can do with some vertebrae. Okay. This year, Michael and his friends came from San Francisco with a plan to collect bones from the desert floor and use them to construct an archway. For him, it is art for art's sake. It's not really a purpose. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. We're having fun. For others, there is deeper meaning. Bones provide structural framework and um, what you need for every community to take place and exist. At its heart, Burning Man has always been primarily about the art of building a community in which people can be expressive, free. And no one knows that better than Larry Harvey. A dozen years ago, he built a wooden man on a California beach and set it ablaze. A crowd gathered, and Burning Man was born. What we created was, a, was, a, was an instant community. And, and uh, we were tremendously moved by that. Did you see the possibilities of it right then? I, what I saw then is that we had to do it again. Go ahead and start inching forward, just ever so slightly. Today, the man stands four stories tall. He is erected at the start of each festival and quietly watches the community around him grow. And grow it does. Camps are set up with themes that range from guys who like drums to croquet to, well, whatever this is. The point is, people can do or be or wear or not wear whatever they like. We were walking in from camp, there was, we passed a guy that was all green. I mean, so what makes a guy get up this morning and say, you know, today I want to be green? Okay. Everyone can lie down. So if you want to take the world's largest nude photograph, go right ahead. Okay, got it. Thank you. If you want to go out to the hot springs, paddle around and then pack yourself with mud, no one will look twice. Yeah. You don't want to wear clothes, you don't have to. If you want to, you can. You know, it's whatever you want the way it should be, you know. We make the hive. They bring the honey. Uh, uh, we create just enough order so that this spontaneous, naturally occurring process called culture, which is born of the interactions of people that no one can plan and that no one can control, 
we will begin to happen. The one thing that is absolutely forbidden is almost all commercial trade. There are no Burning Man t-shirts, no bumper stickers, no buttons. There is virtually nothing for sale. Because the most basic tenet of Burning Man is that life is not about watching or buying. It is about participating. There's nothing wrong with money, but there's something wrong with passivity. There's something wrong with vicariousness. There's something wrong, wrong with a nation whose, whose life is led... Uh, uh, entranced before, uh, you'll forgive me, television. So when the sun goes down on Burning Man each evening, the people are their own show, lighting the streets, parading in fantastic costumes, and of course, setting lots and lots of fires. Two, one. Does this strike you as fully safe? <laughs> no one's hurt. Safer than some? <laughs> Maybe not as safe as others. By the end of the first two days, the feeling is running deep. Peace, happiness, and joy have descended on this improbable Garden of Eden. But deep in the nighttime shadows, a serpent is lurking. A lion is ready to pounce. While the creators of Burning Man may insist the festival is not supposed to be about money, they have discovered that the bigger the festival becomes, the more people that flock to the desert, the more money they lose. Tom Foreman continues his report. It is day three in the short life and times of this temporary town. And Radio Free Burning Man is on the air. And I'd like to say a fine good morning to everybody out there and everybody coming in. You know, there are three radio stations in this community and two newspapers telling people about planned events, calling for volunteers, and reminding everyone that even here, there are rules. Here is the biggest reminder of them all. Please do heed. No driving in center camp, so let's not do that. Not a very good thing. <laughs> It used to be that people could drive in center camp, set tents and fires almost anywhere. But as Burning Man has grown, drawing more and more people, some of the great freedom that marked this festival has had to give way. We created a safer physical environment than we had in the past. Marion Goodell has helped organize Burning Man for a number of years now and has watched it evolve. I mean, in order for us to all live here together in, in, in general on this earth, um, we need to respect uh, what it is we all need. Is and that a hard concept to sometimes remind people oh of yeah. in this environment? Oh, sure it is, because they think this is a big party. And it's a party, and it's in the desert, and, and Burning Man means I can do whatever I want. Uh, when, in fact, that's really not the case. Indeed, the streets of Burning Man are alive with county sheriff's deputies, Burning Man's own security officers, and a very real and accurate sense that Big Brother, in this case, Washoe County Sheriff Dick Kirkland, is watching. Uh, one human being lost his life last year. Other human beings were, were injured, and injured critically and severely, uh, taking several air ambulance trips to the hospitals and uh, uh, several times more ground ambulance trips to the hospital. And that had to be brought under control. That had to be brought under control. To that end, Burning Man this year faced the highest cost ever for insurance, permits, fire protection, police patrols, paramedics. Most of the problems they encountered were not that serious. I ask you, what kind of stuff have you been seeing out here? Oh, a lot of heat-related stuff, you know, uh, dehydration, a lot of sunburns. A lot of burns uh, in general, people picking up burning things. But they had to be paid for nonetheless. And for Burning Man, that is a problem. Last year, the festival ended $30,000 in debt. This year, the county's bill alone was over $300,000. With the only real income coming from the $75 entrance fee, sheriff's deputies began seizing all proceeds at the gate. Ideally, uh, our expenses would be balanced by the ticket fees. Uh, at this point right now, we don't have, we won't have 15,000 people, and we need 15,000 people in order to pay the sheriff and pay to our To break expenses. even on this thing. To break even. That's all we want. 
In their own defense, county officials note that this community, in largely rural Nevada, has become overnight the 10th or 12th largest town in the state. That, they say, demands 24-hour public service, and that costs money. But you can't expect the taxpayers of Washoe County to pay for the fund that uh, these folks want to have. They've, they've got to pay for it. In addition, they point out that even though the sheriff's helicopter hovers annoyingly overhead throughout the event, largely participants are free to do whatever they want. From our standpoint, um, we, we treat this as we do any other special event. If, if people are cooperative, uh, they're calm, they're rational, uh, really we're just here to make sure they have a good time. Still, the county's bill is a whopper, and it does not even include the money owed to private contractors for road grading, water trucks, portable toilets. By Saturday evening, organizers are asking participants for help. If you can come up with an extra five, an extra ten, if you give us $100, you get a ticket to next year. You just have to believe it'll happen next year, and that's an act of faith. A few dollars emerge and are stuffed into the donation box, but it is clearly not enough. At this point, uh, the costs that have been imposed upon us by the county are so high that it's entirely possible and quite likely that we will be in debt <clears throat> when this is over. The organizers of Burning Man believe they could quickly and easily solve all of these money problems if they took on a major sponsor or if they allowed widespread merchandising of products. And therein lies the paradox. Because, they say, they would rather let the entire project fail, let all of this go away, before they would do that. If we started vending like any normal operation, then of course that's where we'd make our money. But then everyone would be standing in line to buy something, you know, in the hopes that they could get a life. And <laughs> they don't have to get a life. They've got a life here. And that's why people come to us. That is why people come. For the primitive pageantry, the barely contained creative insanity, and the chance to experience something they might not find anywhere else on Earth. Better than TV, I tell you! It's better than TV! And Sunday night, as the man finally burns, he could symbolize it all at once. The desperate rage against the sameness, the blandness, the consumer culture of everyday life, the hopeless futility of fighting it. The burning Man is built to be doomed, to explode and collapse in a moment of pure freedom that turns into a night of celebration with no thought whatsoever of what tomorrow may bring. Monday morning, the cleanup begins. It has always been a rule of Burning Man that everyone packs out everything he or she brings in, leaving no remnant of the pilgrimage or its people on the desert floor. We will clean this place up so there's nothing here. It will be just like it was before. Over the years, however, that ideal escape plan has fallen somewhat by the wayside. The arrival of more onlookers, more media, and more one-day visitors has made it harder for everyone to know local protocol. Many old-timers are furious about the influx of interlopers. Yet others say, for all of Burning Man's otherworldliness, this is still an American town where all are welcome, for good or bad. I, at Burning Man, I thought this was going to be a bunch of skinheads eating lizards and turning over cars in the desert, you know? Tony came from Tahoe two years ago as a spectator. He came back this year as a believer. And whether they're voyeurs or whether they're participating, I mean, it's who we, it's, it's who we are. It's not just a bunch of deadheads, drunk hippie deadheads out here. This year, it was easy to believe. As a cultural event, Burning Man was wildly successful. There were more exhibitions, more participants, no serious accidents, few incidents of any kind. It was almost perfect. The kind of event organizers say proves this community can keep going, can keep growing. Expressiveness is not dangerous. And if we bring the right elements of our community together, if we have 90% of our people here are expressive, and 10% want to come and party with the, with the artists, we can probably maintain order. We've been told for years that if you have people, if you have too many numbers, people will become passive and you'll have you be overrun by gawkers and, and it won't be Burning Man anymore and it won't be so creative. 
Well, the news is they were absolutely wrong. But financially, this year was disastrous. The gate did not even cover the county's cost, let alone private contractors. Some county officials are suggesting Burning Man should look for a new home. The bottom line, if we leave creditors unpaid in Reno, the politicians will exploit that and say they're irresponsible businessmen, but we saved the county, we, we got their money. Still, there is a remarkable level of conviction among those who are leaving that they will get to come back. Wherever it will be, whether it be here or another site, um, I feel that this, the spirit is just going to carry it on. And, it'll, and if this is quashed, something else will come up somewhere else because it's a very strong movement. And it's a movement of, um, of people allowing expression to come out and new ideas and change to happen. Papa loves Mambo. Larry Harvey will just have to raise more money, the fans say. Maid Marion will just have to let more people know about the troubles. The county will just have to be more understanding. And everyone who came will just have to kick in more money to solve their collective problem. That is what this community is all about, they say. And with everyone's help, they are certain that man will rise like a phoenix from the ashes to burn again. Oh, yeah.